time on a Minotaur, you know, Onik can do it even even better. So I think the fast moving, fast utilization, crowd control tools need to be denied here. I think from uh, from the side of Rebellion as well, they're just concerned about the Hayabusa getting locked down right here. Because technically, two members here can really lock him down. The Roger can chase him through the quad shadow. But for Rebellion, they get away the Julian. So they don't want to allow Onik to get that pick off strat, pick off burst damage advantage. Yep, and uh, history coming in for the new jungler, Ryota. 11th to 12th place in MPL ID Season 8. First place for the GoPay Are uh, Arena Command Championship 2023. Confirmed. Third place, Access Cup online. MLBB Season 4 and 12th to 14th place of MDL ID Season 9. So, of course, he has that experience within him. It's just up to how he want to iron out the stage jitters, the experience, you know, in face of Onik, or Fnatic Onik rather, and they pick up the like, Grok for a Keyboy. We haven't seen this Grok too often in recent times, but against a Hayabusa, when was it? I, it was another tournament where I saw Hayabusa struggling to just secure some camps against the Grok, man. It's a brutal time. But with Rebellion having the Zask, if the Zask can get some assistance clearing, right, and he can rotate, that Nightmare Spawn can do a lot of damage to the Grok, you know, that technically can't really... He just has to walk around and take the zaps coming in from the Nightmare Spawn. There you go, Lee. Oh, and the Barats. Yeah. Edith and Barats. Like you said, Edith. It's going to be a very, very strong laner now. Quite meta for most teams here in MPL ID Season 14. Now, of course, for Fnatic Onik. They have sealed the fate. The Arlet will most likely go to the XP lane. The Grok in the hands of Keyboy. Now, it's either they pick up a jungler for themselves or a gold laner. Yeah, do they want to go for Ruby Gold here and play around the Roger Ooh. and Albert? Or do they want to go yeah. still for an Assassin? Because they could go for an Assassin. Still, they go decide to go for the Harith instead. Harith. Which means Roger Jungle. Harith in the gold lane against the Moskov. We saw the Harith dominate a Moskov. I think it was yesterday. Yep. Or uh, two days before, but, but hey, yeah. Uh, Harith winning lane against the Moskov. So setting up for a lot of kill pressure. Yeah, a, lot of kill, uh, a lot of kill pressure as well as lane dominance. Of course, Harith's one of the strongest lane bullies you can have in the game. And now the draft the index here, Arashi, for both teams. What are you thinking? Well, it really seems to hand towards Rebellion. But I got to say, I feel like I see more potential for Fnatic Onic. It's just a bit more dynamic. And there are a lot more tools available for wide skill plays. For Rebellion, they have tools that are segmented. They have good poke with the Zask. They have all in with the Edith, with the Moscow, uh, global presence with the, with the Moscow, and assassination potential with the Hayabusa. But together, as five, I feel like Onik are the ones that can make it difficult for Rebellion to try and get a lead, get control around the map, and especially around the neutral objectives with the Aurora. All right, now after the long wait, we are ready. Up and running to run into the land of dawn. It's the Blue Welcome Bulls Rebellion Esports against the Sky Kings. Fnatic Onik. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The match we've been waiting for all this time. And Albert making his debut in season 14 on the Roger. He's a national team jungler for ISF, a representative of uh, Indonesia here. So we'll see how good he is still, despite you know not getting a lot of game time. Talking about the national team, of course, Albert could just be the gold medal that Fnatic Onik is looking for to reactivate that competitiveness in the jungle. And for Albert as well, you know, with the Roger, how is he going to approach this game, Arashi? He's going to go aggressive here, going to Litho Pryo. Great moves from both teams. Keyboy tries to find a way to get to the Hayabusa, but at the same time, Audi makes sure that he puts himself between Keyboy and Ryota, allowing him to go for a pretty okay clear so far. And for now, it's just the waiting game. When it comes to the, comes to the Roamer though, pre-level 4, Audi is the one that can make more decisive engages. Level 4 though hey, is hey. where Keyboy is going to make the play, but look at that. Oh, we're going to come down. Good shot kill over Keyboy! Oh. Still able to escape, great flicker out. That Spear of Misery could have punished him. Whew. Almost getting pinned against the wall. Already using the power of nature right there. You're seeing again the one dimension and the one-dimensionedness of the Grok. Look at Kars. Of course, the Flicker himself here. Respect. Both junglers being very active, looking for chances. But look at that mid lane, though. We talked about mid prio being so important, Mirko, just yesterday. The Aurora against the Zask. At least without the assistance of the Roamers, Aurora will, Sans on the Aurora will win all the time. And even with the assistance of the Roamers, the Grok will do better against the Edith when it comes to lane clearing. Instant boom with that power of nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, Fursan's just backing up Lippy. 
up top as the turtle dance will ensue soon. Albert does have the prio here with oh. three members running around. Sway low will pop. His ability is just trying to shoo away the players of Fnatic Onik, but they have Keyboy in charge to look for a play in this little pit. Or Shatter, Audi finding it now. Great Frigid Glacier coming down, but the Dancer's Welcome comes down as well. Now spinning him out with the stun car stomping on him. Sway low. Picking up the kill still on the Dominators Ascent. Albert finding a trade back now. Goes up the like and pounce. But the Dominators Ascent still on him. Forcing him back now with Sun onto Sans. Two to one to RBL. RBL did a great job right there. Engaging with the Dancer's Welcome. You saw Keyboy try to make a play right there, but he wall charges at the uh, the Barats, who was immune during the Daytona's welcome. So it really wasn't used to its full potential at all. But now it's back to round two. So even Matt threw the Spear of Destruction to try and maybe swing things in favor of Rebellion. But Fnatic Onyx are not willing to pull uh, to back away from this. They have the bigger AOE team fight plays. They want to try and punish Rebellion somehow. Seems for Rebellion, they're just gonna concede the turtle bottom lane. You can see Ryota already pathing Albert, securing turtle number one. First neutral objective over to Fnatic Onik. Regardless of what happened there in the pit earlier, Fnatic Onik able to at least just stabilize the goal lead coming in from Rebellion Esports. No longer bleeding that much, but Audi CS could be in a tough position. Uh -oh. Albert just eyeing him. Well, Keyboy looking oh. for the charge. Good barrier. Nice wild charge to stop the onward from getting him out. Primal Rat still popped in. LDCS buying a lot of time. Shadow kill with the quad shadow plays out. Keyboy gonna be very low. Diamond, there's a set. Keyboy! Oh, still able to escape. Now Swaylo decides to go for Albert. And they aren't able to trade it. Fnatic on it winning in that skirmish. Great play with a wild charge right there. And even earlier, Ryota tried to exert some pressure onto the gold lane, but he wasn't able to steal anything from the side of Fnatic Onik in exchange for that turtle. Look at the talent prediction here by our new application, GoPay. Pop pulling against the world, as always. <laughs> nothing new there. Yeah, he likes to defy odds and expectations. Fnatic Onik, of course, high expectations towards Albert so far. He has been delivering quite well, getting the farm ahead as well as Pryo for objectives. The turtle is coming in for Albert Lutfi, though, looking for cars. Cars is actually going to be chunked quite low. Good. Dead to the top. Inside now, splitting it back out. Good quad shadow over. And the shadow kill. What an outplay from cars. Ooh, cars. The timing could have been any more better. That was immaculate for him to dodge the final slash. And that presents them with an important kill towards Lutfi. The timing, the interaction right there, the fact that the vengeance from our look takes you behind the target means he just will jump straight into the mouth of Daytona. That's unfortunate for Onik, but we can see Audi now in trouble. Sans, who has so much mid pressure right here, Swaylo only really has some kind of impact in the game in the middle of a big fight where he can kind of target and dive towards the backline. And once the members of Onik walk away from it, He's just lacking in, in pressure here compared to Sans. Go, oh, great final slash! Oh, what a combo! Fnatic, Onik! Riona walking over, oh. Keyboy's the one who gets it done despite two retries committed. Fnatic, Onik, what was that? What a wombo combo! Now the power of nature, Audi trying to push him away. They will be able to deny a turret from Fnatic, Onik in the mid lane, but Look at CW staying active. Mr. Bald with not to Audi. Able to escape. Whoa. Now Albert like can bounce. Earth Shadow coming down. Albert doesn't care. And now goes on to Ryota who's forced to quad shadow defensively. Matt is waiting for a chance to try and do something. But look at the pressure advantage. All this is happening in, in, in small increments because there's more burst damage and playmaking tools available for Onik. Oh! oh. Lutpi going for the sweep right there. Barely misses Sway low. But that's what I'm talking about. Two members, three members, they can make plays happen without the whole team. As Cars gets walled off right here, Keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> just the emote. Man, this is just so much pressure. And Rebellion are kind of struggling to keep up with the pressure too, because they're lost to turrets. And they're not really getting any compensation for the, for the structures they're forced to kind of concede right here. Looking at the items, Sans has finished the Genius one as well. So lowering the magic resistance, it's gonna indirectly help CW too, by the way. So good synergy oh. and itemization there, but look at Sway low. Woo, look at Audi with the Conceal forcing on a flicker from Sans there. Keyboy just scouting away, trying to deny some of the farm from Ryota. Oh, he goes for the Earth Shanner. Albert actually doesn't get to steal. Ryota with the Retribution secures his own camp. Albert has been very proactive as well, looking for rotational plays. 
Playing behind Keyboy. Meanwhile, for Audi, the same. But they have been abandoning Matt, just trying to bank on him to get the farming, get the items going. Sending him up top now, a swap in the lanes happening. Keyboy again, just being that pesky player he is. Audi, Primal Rat still stuck next to the barrier, wrong side of the barrier. And Fnatic Connic just punishes him. Audi now 0 and 4. Matt gets a turret trade. Ryota clears oh. it up. Oh, CW stunned up. Oh, the Dominator is set. Doesn't find the stun there. CW able to dash out the safety. Still saving his Purify. And that will be another neutral objective to the Roger. Keyboy conceal. <laughs> Over Keyboy. Let's see if they can actually get him down. No, Keyboy's just too tanky, even with Riona jumping in. Finally gets the kill down, but Albert is right there to punish. Oh, now with the help of Sans. Trying to go for the stun. Albert goes in. Lippy. Oh, final slash. Did not find anyone. Quite unfortunate, but look at Onyx and the way they're playing, man. Sans for the longest time was in the jungle, the bottom side jungle of Rebellion, walking in aggressively on the vulnerable mage. This is just the kind of stuff that, that Sans does. Look at Ryota, forced to back away. Sans follows up. And now the ice cold finisher, Sans. Will he do it? He's just walking him down. Oh! <laughs> My god, Sans, you can't keep doing this. That's a killing spree for Sans. Ice Cold, and again, just playing with his food. Sans does not stop. As a game fight, but the, the new application, GoPay, pops up. Wow. There's Aurora State people. Wait a minute. Oh, Matt, Spear of Destruction. Oh, escape. Albert, though, he's a fast boy. You know how fast I am? I'm fast as Albert, boy. Gets stunned up, doesn't care. Albert. Dominator's a set, though. Matt gets slain by the ice cold executioner in Sans. And look at him. Oh, no. Now on the sway low, he goes. Good night, Merrick Spawn. Audi gonna be mauled down by Albert. My lord, it's a 6,000 goal lead. Fnatic Onyx are controlling every aspect of the game. Let's talk about the elephant in the room right here. Why the heck is Sans flanking on an Aurora? He keeps <laughs> coming from the side. He's not playing front to back. This is not what this, this hero was supposed to be made for. They're going straight for the dive though on the mid side. Sway low. Oh my. Dead. Oh, CW jumping in. Albert probably flew with the leg pound now, man. Trying to dish out some damage, but Albert might as well be a frontline now. He can't take damage. Insanity, the national team star makes a statement with this Roger just growling left and right. But it feels like Fnatic Arctic, every single member is on the same page. They're able to zone out, able to flank in the sides. And even their sieges are so sweet, their team fights well synchronized. Yeah, the items, your glowing one is completed for Sans as well. So even the sustain from, let's say, the primal wrath here that all you can, can rely on, it's kind of cut in effectiveness. There's just way too much burst damage. And look at Lutpi, looking for a play. And look at how many ways they have to try and start a fight, man. The barrier, uh, the final slash, and even the Frigid Glacier coming in. So many different ways. And you can see that the Rebellion are confused, right? They're concerned that if they deal with one, the other is right behind it. And that's before talking about the chase potential that Albert has. As you can, as you can see earlier, oh, cars no. now, maybe stuck. Cars? That's in <laughs> this welcome defensively. Just to escape there. And he's a small dino. He can't get the big guy stacks. It has been a non-stop pressure coming in from Fnatic Onik. They can't stop the skirmishes, the pickoffs from left to right. Now just sieging towards the base of Rebellion Esports. How long will they hold? Oh, oh good flick around by cars there. He had to use both his initiation tools to escape. This is how much pressure is exerted by Fnatic Onik. You can see Rebellion, even Audi, that's supposedly supposed to be the one making plays on the Edith, is just so difficult. Car is now reduced to a mini lizard right there. You can see that it's just. <laughs> he's so small! He's Tona, what happened? It's a tiny boy! The little dinosaur. He's gonna, he's gonna work his way up though. Audi trying to shatter the earth. But now, oh. Slash is placing both. Pretty Glacier pop down as well, but they aren't able to find anyone. Cars are slowly but surely growing. Look at him. Oh my goodness. They're very slow though. <laughs> Dinosaurs extinct. Cars, one of them. <laughs> and now he we have to slow follow. down. <laughs> we have to slow down. And look at it in a retrospective way. How does Rebellion Esports ca crawl out of this hellhole of Fnatic Onik? I feel like Ryota at this point is just rendered irrelevant. We've seen multiple members from Fnatic Onik walk into a bush where Ryota is waiting to no avail. Like, Albert walked in earlier and technically he is a marksman, right? Marksman fighter. But Ryota says no. I, I have nothing to do with that animal, man. That, nah. that, that wild animal is too dangerous. <laughs> he backs out. I think the same thing can be said for CW, for Sans. They both are strong oh. enough right here to kind of deal with him solo. Look at Lutfi though, jumping on Matt. 
Wild charge over to the wall. Forces a purify. Wow! What a Whoa. combo! Flickers forward, finds the angle. Audi might be next. Like it pounce over to cars. Final smash, bringing him back into the death. <laughs> Goodness. Chop down. But it was cars being chopped and chopped up by Fnatic Onik. Again, losing two members. They're readying themselves for the siege. Look at Sans unfazed by the place from Yoda. <laughs> look at Sans stands there up. menacingly. And look at the rest of Rebellion. They're trying to defend, but it's against five members. Can they do it? Look at me, Sans says. I am the front line now. <laughs> Keeps on walking up front now, tries to go for the waves. I guess, you know, it makes sense when you have to death and his welcome when you get punched. Because usually the tournament boxing is bite down. Bite down hard when you get punched. <laughs> It's, it's the, it's the, I don't know, the toughness of Rebellion to try and do something right here. But they're slowly and slowly losing a lot and more control. Two base turrets on the side far away from the Lord. They have Matt to try and do some kind of split push. They do spot Albert right there, but they can't do anything about it. Fnatic Onyx will get the Lord and Rebellion are gonna bank on that late game base defense without a flank where Sans finally can come from the front like a normal human being and not flank around on an Aurora. Yeah, if Fnatic Onik is forced to play that front to back as the siege happens, I feel like Rebellion Esports still has the chance, you know, the Sway Low does have that much of a delay and then you have Matt just trying to crawl his way into the item spikes, the power spikes, but then again Fnatic Onik's already everywhere around the map, this time around with the Lord in their pockets, they look to siege the crystal of Rebellion Esports! Oh, oh no, Dynaman! With the old big guy, Saxy W, with a crown fool, untargetable. The shadow kill can't kill anyone. What charge from Keyboy to knock them up, and now even the Dino can't withstand the damage. Ice oh. cold damage, CW with his mod force. That's another winner crown as Albert buys the immortality. CW jumping back and forth. What is that damage? Ryuna almost got one shot, and now oh. the final slash of the K as they end game one. Insanity from Fnatic Onik again, just trying to be so untouchable. Forcing the fights from minute one. And they win it all. They cut off the horns of the Blue Bulls in game number one. It was looking kind of sketchy. Everyone from Fnatic Onyx were getting low on the HP bars. But it doesn't matter, man. When you're 13k go to head, when you have the tools available, when you are ice cold, quite literally, Sans, it doesn't matter. They just go and straight up end the game. And despite having a chance that Rebellion we're just completely shut out. They haven't been able to play their composition. I mean, like, again, the Hayabusa has been proven to be the ray of hope for Rebellion Esports, but come minute eight, minute nine, he was basically rendered irrelevant by the players of Fnatic Onik. Again, such a good debut, a good start for, for Albert in that sense, but Fnatic Onik today in that game, in that opening match,